Hello all, welcome back to another exciting video on activation functions. This video is the summary of all the activation functions we have discussed so far. I will be discussing about these activation functions. Some of them are commonly used and some of them are advanced functions. The variants of relu like leaky relu, parametric relu, those kind of functions are missing here as there is a separate video on all of those. Apart from those, all others are covered here. For every activation function, we touch upon these points. What is the motivation or need for that activation function? The definition of it and how does it look graphically and its derivative. Then we discuss some of the properties of that and the performance comparison with respect to the previous functions. And finally, we see where do we use these activation functions in the network, whether they are useful for hidden layers or output layers. Let's start with our first activation function, which is step function. The motivation for step function is from the human brain. It is observed that for different tasks, different neurons get fired in our brain. So this firing of the neuron is represented mathematically as 1 or 0. And this set the motivation that if the neuron has more information, it should be fired. If that neuron doesn't have much information, it should not be fired. So the definition became this. If the input is greater than or equal to 0, then the output is 1. Otherwise, it is 0. And this is how the graph looks like. So the derivative is 0 at all points because it's flat. Coming to the properties, from the curve we can say that it is not continuous and the output is bounded because the maximum value we can get is 1 and the minimum value we can get is 0. It is not a zero centered function because we have all positive values, we don't have any negative values. And the activation function is one of the earliest function and the performance is poor compared to the modern activation functions we have. This has been used in both hidden layers and output layers in the early days. Next comes the sigmoid activation function. The motivation is to have a smoothed curve instead of hard thresholds. Whatever we have in step function is hard threshold. Instead of that, we should have a smooth curve. We should not have any threshold. And also the output should indicate the probability. So that's why the function definition became this 1 by 1 plus e power minus x. The exponential here, make sure we have all positive values in the output. And if you see the graph here, it is ranging from 0 to 1. And also the output value depends on the quantity of the input. It doesn't depend on only on the sign of the input. It also depends on the quantity. If the input is large values, then there are chances you will get output around 1. The properties are evident from the graph. It is continuous, so it is differentiable at all points. It is a nonlinear function. It is monotonic because it is continuously increasing and it is bounded. The limits are 0 and 1. It is not a zero centered function because it does not give negative values. It only gives positive values. And the performance is average. This is one of the most used activation functions in the early days. This is like the default choice for a long time. But this work okay -ish if you compare with the modern activation functions. It can be used in both hidden layer and output layers. Because for output layers it can be viewed as a probability score. Sigmoid has one problem which is called vanishing gradient. Because of the saturation in the curve here on both the sides, the derivative almost becoming negligible. So it is becoming smaller and smaller and it is almost becoming negligible. Because of this, the training gets stagnated because the weight updates doesn't happen. The next function is tan h function. Motivation came from looking for zero centered function and it is also a smooth curve. It also has a probabilistic nature, but the range is between minus one to plus one. If you observe the curve looks same as sigmoid, but the range is minus one to plus one. So it has negative values in the output. So it is a zero centered function. The derivative exists at all points because it's continuous and the function is non-linear in nature. It is bounded. The limits are minus one and plus one. Coming to the performance, it works better than sigmoid function because of its zero centered nature. But it cannot be used in the output layers for classification because we cannot have negative probabilities. So we cannot use this in the output layers. It can only be used for hidden layers. Tan H also has the vanishing gradient problem because of the saturations here. And the next activation is relu activation. This is one of the most used activation functions so far. Both sigmoid and tan h faces vanishing gradient problem because of the saturation of their curves. So the motivation came from solving the vanishing gradient problem and also looking for a linear like function. So they started looking for a function which has some linear properties but powerful enough to fit any nonlinear function. So it looks like this. It is zero for all the negative inputs and it is identity function for all the positive inputs. So this is piecewise linear function. It's not complete nonlinear. It is linear on the positive side and zero for the negative side. So the curve is not smooth. So the derivative doesn't exist at zero. If you observe here, the derivative is one for 
positive values and for negative values it is zero but at zero it is not available generally we consider the derivative as zero for zero also and from the graph we can say that it is monotonic because it is continuously increasing and it is unbounded on the positive side there is no limit on the positive value whereas there is a limit on the negative value which is zero and it is also not a zero centered function because it doesn't have any negative outputs it will only give positive outputs and the performance wise it performs much better than sigmoid and tan h and it is the go to function for the hidden layers it cannot be used for output layers because for classification this cannot be viewed as a probability relu has one problem which is dead neurons if you observe the negative region the output is zero for the negative values so the neurons will become dead and won't be useful in the further training process this is called dying relu problem or dead neurons problem this is solved by other variants of relu like leaky relu exponential linear unit parametric relu randomized relu etc i have shared the link in the description below the next activation function is soft plus the motivation came from looking for functions like relu but it should be continuous the definition looks like this it's ln of 1 plus e power x and the curve looks like almost like relu except it is smooth around the zero region if you observe this function this is nothing but sigmoid so the derivative of soft plus is a sigmoid function and these properties are evident from the graph so it is a continuous function and it is non linear in nature it is monotonic because it is continuously increasing and it is unbounded on the positive side but it is bounded on the negative side just like relu function it is not a zero centered because it does not give any negative values in the output and the performance wise it is same as relu but it is not consistent across different tasks so it is not very much popular and it's not much used actually and the use case is it can be used for only hidden layers because it cannot be used for output layers our next function is max out activation function this is different from all the activation functions we have seen so far the motivation came from solving the dying relu problem or dead neurons problem it's very simple just taking the maximum of all the pre activations that means whatever the weighted sums we have got take the maximum of all those and pass it to the output so there won't be any zero in the output unless the maximum is zero so there won't be dead neuron issue we can't exactly keep a formula for its derivative because it's one for the positive values and minus one for the negative values it's a non continuous function like relu or you can say it is a piece wise linear function because it passes as it is whatever you got the input it passes the same thing to the output it is clearly not bounded to any range output can have any value between minus infinity to plus infinity and it is a zero centered function because it can have negative values it performs much better than relu you can see the difference here the performance of max out is better than relu but the problem is its complexity max out activation function is much more complex than relu and the number of parameters we use in max out gets doubled compared to relu so if we have like n number of neurons in a layer the number of parameters will be at least two times n want to understand why the parameters gets doubled have a look at the detailed video i shared in the description this can be used only for the hidden layers again our next function is gelu which is gaussian error linear unit this combines the properties of relu and dropout dropout is a regularization method to improve the generalization capability of the network now gelu aims at combining both of them into a single function this is the function definition and erf is the error function we have in probability and statistics and this is the approximation of gelu in terms of sigmoid function this is how the graph looks like if you look at it it has some negative values so it is a zero centered function and it is unbounded on the positive side and bounded on the negative side if you observe the graph the curve is decreasing a bit and then it started increasing this is non monotonic in nature coming to performance it performs much better than relu and exponential linear unit you can see that this is the classification error on the cfart and dataset gelu activation converges much faster compared to the other two activations and this also used in case of hidden layers only so far we have seen the activations that is designed by humans but swish is the activation that is designed by an algorithm so that is called nas neural architecture search this nas is developed by google brain for discovering the best network architectures for any use case and the same is used here for discovering the best activation function and it came up with this function it is nothing but x into sigmoid of x the graph looks like this the function is continuous so the derivative exists at all points and this is the derivative formula and it is a non linear function it is non monotonic because the curve is having both positive and negative slopes and it is unbounded on the positive side but bounded on the negative side it does have negative values in the output so 
it is a zero centered function coming to the performance it outperformed all the other activations along with relu across different tasks and it is the preferred activation function over relu next activation is mish activation it is by far the best activation function out of all those we have seen it is inspired by swish activation and hand designed to perform better than swish if you observe the tan h activation function is better than the sigmoid activation function the same principle is applied here the swish activation function definition is x into sigmoid of x whereas they have replaced the sigmoid with the tan h function along with that they have added soft plus function instead of x here the derivative is a bit complex here to calculate it has all the properties almost same as swish function and if you observe the performance it outperformed swish and relu across different networks per cfr 10 and cfr 100 they have conducted multiple experiments to validate the performance of mish and in all the cases it outperformed all other activation functions also they have conducted so many ablation studies to check the robustness of mish activation across all the variations in the hyperparameters our final activation function is softmax whatever the activation functions we have seen so far we can't use any of them for multi class model in the output layers so we can use them in hidden layers but we can't use them in the output layers because for multi class model the output layer should have a probability scores for all the classes and the sum of probability should be equal to 1 so that criteria is met by only softmax activation function so this e power x is to make sure all the values are positive and this is the normalization factor in the denominator to make sure the values range between 0 and 1 and the sum of values are equal to 1 this is how the softmax works these are the pre activations what are the values we get here depending on the value it will convert that into a value between 0 and 1 and the sum of all these values will be equal to 1 because of this normalization and this is the derivative of the softmax function this is a bit complex because for softmax every output depends on all the outputs of other neurons because of this normalization factor if you want to know in detail about the derivative of softmax have a look at the video i have shared in the description i have explained the softmax function in detail over there and these are the properties of softmax it is a nonlinear function and it is bounded because the values are always between 0 and 1 it is not a zero centered function because the values are all positive it doesn't have negative values and the use case is only for the output layers we don't use this in the hidden layers generally we use it only for the output layers and that too for multi class classification these are all the activation functions we have and for each of these i have a detailed video shared in the description if you want to go deeper into any of these activation functions have a look at those videos that's all from this video in the next video we will see the python implementations of all these activation functions at one place see you there thank you